This video will explain the basic concepts of testing Adobe Flash and Flex applications with TestComplete. You can use TestComplete to create and run automated tests against Adobe Flex and Flash based applications that are run in either Microsoft Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox. TestComplete provides the same level of support for both Flash and Flex applications, so all the testing features that are applied for testing Flash apps are also applicable for testing Flex modules. You can record tests and then play them back against your application as many times as you need, and you can use special test objects to simulate mouse clicks, keystrokes, menu item selection, and other user actions against both Flex and Flash controls with ease. You can also call native methods and properties of tested objects in your tests to get information about an object's state and data, or to perform unit tests. To verify objects' properties and state, you can use various checkpoints that are provided by TestComplete. For instance, you can use a region checkpoint to verify the application looks as expected, or you can use a property checkpoint to confirm that an object has an expected property value. Now it's important that your test automation tool be able to recognize individual objects in the tested application and to be able to call native methods and properties of those objects. TestComplete offers several approaches that make internal objects, methods, and properties of Flex and Flash applications accessible to the test engine, so you can choose the way that best suits your needs. Now one approach is to use the Flash Injector Helper module, which is shipped along with TestComplete. This module helps the TestComplete test engine obtain access to native methods and properties of the application's internal objects. And this module automatically makes Flex or Flash applications testable at runtime, which frees you from preparing the application in advance for testing. You just need to install a debug version of the Adobe Flash player and configure it in a special way so that it preloads the Flash injector when the Flash player runs Flex or Flash applications. Now another method is TestComplete's Runtime Loader. This is another helper module that's shipped with TestComplete. It automatically embeds TestComplete's testing library into your Flex or Flash application at runtime. To use this feature, you need to copy the Runtime Loader files to the computer where the tested Flex or Flash application resides. A third approach is to compile the tested application with the Flex client testing library that's shipped along with TestComplete. This library allows TestComplete to expose public methods and properties of Flex and Flash applications objects. Now TestComplete can also work with Flex and Flash based controls exposed by Microsoft's Active Accessibility technology. This approach supports applications created with any version of ActionScript, however it includes a number of limitations compared to the functionality provided by the other three approaches. You should consider this approach as obsolete as it's really only intended to be used with legacy TestComplete projects. Now, the first three approaches, Flash Injector, Runtime Loader, and Flex Client, only support applications created with ActionScript 3.0 or later. Each of them provides a greater level of application openness compared to MSAA, but each has its specifics that may or may not match up with your testing needs. So for more information on each of these testing techniques, see the other videos on our website. You can also find complete information about them and their pros and cons in the TestComplete documentation. A bit later, we'll describe how deeply TestComplete can see into the tested applications and what properties and methods are available to the test engine. But before doing this, I'd like to mention that depending on the selected approach, you may need to perform some actions in order to prepare your browser, Flash player, and your Flex and Flash modules for testing. The first step is to create an HTML page that will contain your Flex or Flash application. At this point in time, TestComplete does not support testing of self-executed Flash applications and applications that run in a standalone Flash player. If you're going to test a Flash application, it must be run in windowed mode so that TestComplete can access it via a browser. Also, you may need to change certain settings of IE or Firefox and change the security settings for the Adobe Flash player. If you're going to test a Flash movie, you may also need to set certain options in your test complete project. And finally, you may need to perform some actions that are specific to the individual approach that you've selected to get test complete access into your Flex or Flash applications internals. All these actions are described in the test complete documentation in detail. You can get more information from the videos on our website, each of which demonstrates various Flex and Flash testing approaches. And you may only need to perform some of the preparation actions. And once you've prepared everything, you don't need to configure settings before every test run.
After you've prepared your application for testing, go ahead and launch it and see what objects are available to the test engine. I have this Flex application loaded up here in Internet Explorer. This is a sample Flex app that's up on our website, and it was compiled with the Flex client library. So this provides TestComplete with its access to internal objects, properties, and methods. So let's see what's available for the test engine. I'm going to flip back to TestComplete here and click on the Object Browser tab. All right, now the Flex and Flash applications reside within the Internet Explorer or Firefox browser objects. So here's IE. I'm going to expand that. And then I'm going to come down to the page that actually contains my Flex applications. I'm going to expand that. Expand here. And you'll notice any object that has this glyph, this FX glyph, is one that is a Flex object. Now each object contains a set of properties and methods that allow you to work with the object from your tests. And you can see those over here on the right hand side of the screen. Among these properties, there's a special flex object property. And this is what provides access to the native properties and methods of the underlying flex object. And to get to those, just click this ellipses button. And now you're looking right here at all the internal properties for that object. And here are all the methods associated with that object. Okay, so now let's learn how to create tests against Flex and Flash applications with Test Complete. I'm going to use this website right here. I'm going to close my browser down before I start any testing. And I'm going to create a new project just by clicking on this Create New Project button here. And I give my project a more descriptive name. I'll call this the Flex Sample Project. And we'll click Next. And now I can add a tested application to the project. And to do that, I first have to select the application type. As we're testing a Flex application, I'm going to choose Web. And then I'm going to choose Functional Testing of Web Pages. On this screen, we can configure a list of tested applications. To add our Flex application to the list of tested apps, I'm going to click the Add button. And you can see that adds a new item to the list. And now I can specify the name that will be used to address the tested application in my tests. I'm going to call this my Flex app instead of page one. Okay. We can also specify what browser we want to use in testing. As you can see, Test Complete's auto detected all the browsers that are on my system, but for our purposes today, I'm going to stick with the 32 bit version of IE. And I can specify the URL of the site that we're going to test. I'm just going to paste in the URL. Uh, to my website there. All right, last thing we want to do is make sure this auto run box is selected. If it is, then Test Complete will automatically launch the specified browser to our Flex application when we start recording. So you'll see that in action in just a minute. Okay, so now we'll click Next. I'm going to keep the default settings for the visualizer, and I'm going to use JScript as my scripting language of choice. Now you can see that our project's been created and our website has been added to our list of tested apps. Okay, so now let's record a test against our Flex application. I'm just going to click this Record New Test button. Test Complete's going to minimize down to a small toolbar and it automatically invokes our browser and takes us out to our Flex site. And now let's perform some actions on our application. Uh, for example, let's say today we want to modify one of our customer's orders. So I'm going to click on John Smith here. I'm going to click the Edit Order button. And let's say that uh, John Smith actually wanted the family album product and he wanted 50 of those. Okay, now you'll notice that when I changed my quantity to 50, this discount field auto populated with a value of 15%. So let's verify that that discount was in fact put into that box. And the way we're going to do that is with a feature called checkpoints. And checkpoints let you verify all kinds of things inside your application. Uh, the checkpoint we want to use today is called a property checkpoint because that text is just a property of a particular object on screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose the object whose properties I want to verify. And I'm just going to select the object by dragging this little finder tool right over the object in question. And you'll notice I got the discount box selected there. It's got the red highlight around it. So I'm going to release the mouse. Test Complete captures a reference to that object. I've got the right one selected, so I'm going to click Next. And now I want to verify the text property of that object. So to do that, I'm going to click on this Advanced View link. And then I'm going to scroll down until I get to the Flex object. I'm going to click on the ellipses in here. And then I'm going to find the text property inside this list. And since there are a lot of properties here, I'm just going to type the word text into this search field. There we go. Text 15%. That's what we want to verify. So now I'm going to click Next. And this final screen is just a summary of what the checkpoint is going to do. We're going to make sure that that flex object's text property equals 15%.
All right, so now we'll say finish. Now I'm going to close the edit dialog. I'm going to close my browser down. And finally, I'll stop recording. Now Test Complete's going to take a moment and process all the commands and render them as a keyword test. And as you can see in looking through here, Test Complete was able to recognize all the controls inside our application. Here's the checkpoint that we created. And you'll notice that as I select various actions inside my test case, this bottom panel is also highlighting. This is the visualizer, and what this does is shows you images of what the application looked like at a particular point in the recording process. So for example, when we clicked on the OK button, as you see right here, then this is what the screen looked like at that point in time. Okay, so now I'm going to run the recorded test and make sure that it plays back properly. So to do that, I'm just going to click the Run Test button. And then Test Complete will start executing commands and it will perform that same sequence of actions that we just recorded. Okay, so I've fast forwarded a bit and after our test finishes, Test Complete displays its test results here in the test log panel. And this panel provides us with detailed information about all the actions that were performed during the test. For instance, this first message is telling us that we invoked the browser to the target website. Uh, this message right here indicates that the test selected the specified order from the list and this message here corresponds to the checkpoint that we created during recording. Now when you select a message in the log you can also see pictures of the application both that has appeared at record time and as it appeared at runtime. So you can easily see the application state and determine if its behavior differed from what we had during test recording. The log items panel that you see right here provides us with information that the test passed successfully as denoted by the green check mark and down here this little information palette tells us if there were any errors or warnings during the course of the test in this case we had no warnings or errors at all as you can see even novice users can easily record and playback tests for flex and flash applications with test complete power users can benefit from the access to native properties and methods in order to create more powerful and flexible tests for more information on testing Adobe Flex and Flash applications with Test Complete, please visit our website at smartbear.com and check out the rest of our video library. We wish you luck and hope you enjoy automating your tests with Test Complete.